What if you turn a Fox 40 into a single crown fork? If you were given a chance to be a bike component, what would it be? Will you keep riding the Uno Dash? <coughs> too much whiskey, too fast. Hello, mountain bike friends. I'm Jeff. I'm the founder and CEO of Worldwide Cyclery, and this is volume seven of Ask Jeff Anything, where I take all tons of hundreds of questions from you guys on Instagram and YouTube and pick out my favorite ones, the best ones, and answer them here and hopefully make this very entertaining and funny, but also informative and interesting, and I think you're really going to like it. Before I get to the first question here, I'm gonna go ahead and have myself some Yeti Cycles whiskey in a coffee cup, because why not? Hmm. Oh, that's strong, but also good. All right, first off, are you guys ever serious? Yeah, yeah, we actually are. Um, one of the core values of our company is balancing fun and focus. And kind of what that means is really knowing when to focus, when to pay attention and what really matters. Um, and also when it's appropriate to have fun and mess around and goof off. Um, I think you'll notice that in this video and kind of all of our YouTube videos and just our company in general really embodies that idea. Um, be informative, be helpful, know that the customers matter, know that this business matters and it's very meaningful, but also at the same time, you know, life is meant to laugh a lot and have fun. <laughs> Tell us more about the people that make WC operate so well. Uh, well, if you're curious, we have an About Us page Link below in the video description. It's on our website and I think it's pretty good. It talks about exactly, you know, why we exist and how we're here to support people having fun on bicycles and our mission is kind of to redefine what a bike shop can be and there's information on myself and sort of how I started the company and what we care about and there's all the staff on there with really funny descriptions. Some of them I wrote, some of them I wrote that were not really appropriate, which have since been edited because a lot of people look at that page. Anyways, go check out that page. It's really good. There's a lot of laughter to be found there and also just inf information about us. I can't even talk. You blew it! Lava lamp or black light? Definitely lava lamp because if I had a black light, you'd be able to see all of the Juan Jolis. Jolis. I have no idea how to say that. How do you guys not have the dickish bike shop vibe and have super competitive prices? Well, I'm glad you don't think we have the dickish bike shop vibe. Um, that's actually kind of a known thing and a problem in the bike industry in general. I think it's very common and I've heard it a lot throughout my life of being in the bike industry that bike shops tend to be derogatory and rude and I don't know, just like on their high horse towards people who don't necessarily know a lot about bikes or ride bikes a lot or that are just like, beginning to get into the sport. I don't know. So, I mean, I think it's really important. A huge part of our business is customer experience and customer service and treating people with kindness, regardless of if they know all the different types of bottom brackets or not, or if they've been riding for two weeks or 20 years. Um, I don't know. I think a lot of that really just boils down to who we are as people and who we hire and how we want to present ourselves and be of value to the bike industry. So yeah, I'm glad you don't think we have the dickish vibe. And if you ever think that, please email me and come to me and kick me in the nuts. What if you turn a Fox 40 into a single crown fork? Uh, for those of you that don't know, a Fox 40 is an eight inch travel downhill fork, longest travel fork that Fox makes. And when I saw this question, I thought, you know who would do this? My good friend, Logan Mullally. He's always got a downhill bike. He's always got a Fox 40 on it and he did it. Look at it. How do you feel about people using your customer service to ask questions about components when they have no intention of buying it from you? It's actually a pretty good question. Um, we, we do have really good customer support. That's something we take pride in and absolutely try to do our best on and try to lead the industry in terms of that, in terms of emails, phone calls, live chats, all of that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, we help people all the time with component compatibility questions and bike builds and wheel builds and all sorts of bike related stuff and it's a lot because bike parts are really complicated. Uh, whether they have no intention of buying it from us, 
I don't really care. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I think we're doing the right thing by having great customer support and being a value to the industry. So yeah, I mean, whatever. Ask us whatever you want. We're gonna answer it whether you buy from us or not. What lasting impact will COVID have on the bike industry? Do you expect this drastic interest in cycling will continue moving forward or will people sell off their newly purchased bikes? That's a very good question and pretty much everyone in the bike industry is trying to predict that right now. So for those of you that don't know, uh, the pandemic basically made the sport of cycling of all kinds and all disciplines and all categories way more popular. It turns out it's a great socially distant activity to do and you can do it with your friends and your family and stay apart from each other and you can do it right out your front door. So. Literally, I mean, maybe millions of people got into the sport that had never done it before and purchased bikes under $1,000, under $2,000. People who were already riding and were enthusiast riders that ride all the time, which is mostly the customer base we serve, they just rode more often because they were working from home or they were getting unemployment checks and had more free time to ride more often. So the, the industry exploded. Um, it basically went through like nine months of inventory in two and a half months. And now, as of now, right, this is uh, late August, the entire industry is struggling. About 60% of our own online catalog is out of stock. And it's gone. So there's all sorts of supply chain issues and all that's what's, it's, yeah, it's kind of a mess. But that's what happened in the cycling industry. So it got super popular and tons of new people got bikes, whether that be high-end mountain bikes or lower-end bikes. Um, the whole industry is trying to predict what's going to happen. Are these people going to stick with it? Are they going to, you know, once gyms open back up and baseball and football, are they just going to go back to their normal way of life and leave their bike in the garage or just huck them and sell them really cheap as used bikes? I don't know. I, I think there's going to be a percentage of both. I think that I, my, my hope, my optimistic hope is that people will fall in love with the sport. Um, just like probably everyone watching this loves riding mountain bikes and gets a ton of you know, fun and enjoyment out of it. I hope people find that in the sport and stick with it and make it a lifelong hobby. That'll be great for the industry as a whole. I'm sure there will be a percentage of people that, you know, really had fun with it and broke their collarbone and said, well, I'm not gonna do that anymore because it is a little dangerous. <laughs> Uh, there'll be people who just did it with their family and then once things go back to normal, they'll go back to playing baseball with their family and not riding bikes because they were more avid baseball players to begin with. So I don't know. I think in general, it's going to lift up the industry. Um, it's for sure going to contract from the crazy boom that it experienced during the pandemic. But yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. How has your day been? What sort of new things are you working on for Kettle Mountain? Do you have any plans to continue expanding WWC to other locations? When, in your opinion, do you think things will get back to normal from a supply chain aspect? Cheers. Uh, a lot of questions. Uh, my day? It's fine. It's going great. Thanks. Um, what sort of new things are you working on for Kettle Mountain? So for those of you that don't know, probably most of you watching YouTube know, uh, Kettle Mountain is a brand that we acquired a little over a year ago. Um, makes really high-end technical mountain bike apparel with a very casual cross-functional aesthetic. Um, we're going to continue growing and scaling that thing. Uh, we've since, since acquisition have made uh, some really cool socks and gloves and those are the two new products to the product line that we designed ourselves. We're currently working on a whole bunch of new product that's going to uh, basically hit the stores in uh, early 2021. One. Um, we're stoked. I mean, I think we're, we're really excited for that brand to like just make great outdoor apparel that's cross-functional for on the bike, off the bike, hiking, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I'm really optimistic to get into that out, outdoor apparel industry and, and grow and scale kettle because I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a good time. So check that out. We have an Instagram if you want to look at that. Um, we obviously sell kettle on kettlemountain.com and uh, on Worldwide Cyclery. If you're curious, uh, do we have any plans to continue expanding WWC to other locations? Not as of now, um, yeah, probably not. We we do have three retail stores as of now, uh, one in Southern California, kind of the home base, and one in uh, Sparks, Nevada, um, and then one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, those also act as sort of distribution hubs where we ship product out. Um, yeah, I don't think we're gonna open any new ones anytime soon, not, not on deck for now. Uh, when, in your opinion, do you think things will get back to normal from a supply chain aspect? So I kind of touched on that in the last question regarding to the uh, factors from COVID. I don't know. So obviously COVID had two things. The demand boomed and at the same time, the supply chain kind of just had arrows thrown at it all over the place. There's huge issues in manufacturing stuff, um, especially in Asia, and that kind of screwed up everything as well. 
I think it's gonna take at least until the end of this year for things to kind of get back to normal and, and the factories to get caught back up and the brands to get stocked back up with inventory. So yeah, but a lot of brands now are saying like, we have no bikes until spring of 2021, which is crazy because that's like eight months away. She Jared Bierman, if you had to pick one bike to have forever, what color SB150 would it be and why? <laughs> Uh, Jared, uh, Jared works here and he's in love with Yeti SB150s. He has a really cool one that we recently posted on Instagram and it got a boatload of likes. Take a look. Uh, looks rad. I like those bikes too. Um, I would probably pick the silver one. I think they call it anthracite. <laughs> That's too much whiskey too fast. If you were given a chance to be a bike component, what would it be? I would say grips, because I like to be handled and touched all day. <laughs> I, can, I can see you shaking your head. Strava, yes or no, and why? Uh, I personally don't use Strava. I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I spend a lot of time all day staring at screens and playing with electronics, and when I go and ride my bike, I kind of want it to be a little bit more of the therapeutic meditative side of just having fun outside on a mechanical machine and I don't want to like mess around with my phone. I usually don't ever take my phone with me. And yeah, so I just don't use Strava. A lot of people have told me I should and should have like a presence on Strava and blah, blah, blah. We do have a worldwide cyclery Strava account that our staff uses and we use, do group rides on there sometimes. Well, we did last year, not so much this year. Uh, but yeah, personally, not a Strava guy. I just like to kind of get away from electronics when I go and ride my bike, my preference. How comfortable are Kettle Mountain socks? They're extremely comfortable. Made from wool in New Zealand. Take a look at this sheep or goat or something yelling. <coughs> How's worldwide cutlery going? Um, for those of you that don't know, in 2019, we did what I would consider an epic April Fool's prank. And we made a YouTube video and a whole media campaign, email blasts, Instagram, everything, uh, basically titled Why We're Shutting Down. And uh, the YouTube video was dead serious and we said we're closing down Worldwide Cyclery to get into something we're more passionate about and we're gonna start making kazoos and cutlery. Um, and we called it Worldwide Cutlery or Worldwide Cutlery and Kazoos. I think that was the website domain, still might even work. And uh, we sold a bunch of sporks, cutlery and kazoos and it was great and it was a hilarious uh, April Fool's joke. And it's going really well. We've, we've sold out of a lot of that stuff. We're restocking kazoos right now. We're getting them off of Alibaba and printed on there, Worldwide Cutlery and Kazoos. Uh, I think we have sporks in stock. Uh, we have the Eco Sporks. Uh, if you're curious, link below. Uh, I personally wrote all the descriptions for all of the kazoos, like the titles and the product descriptions, and I think they're pretty funny, so check them out. Uh, I worked really hard on those things and was probably intoxicated when I wrote all of them, but they ended up quite hilarious. All right, Ryan, no new. Since you guys have the best and most popular parts from every brand available to you guys to build bikes, do you ever get bored only seeing the top end, everything on every frame up build? If so, what would you build up for yourself to change it up, but still enjoy showing off on the gram? Hashtag dream build. Um, that's a good point. I don't know. I think myself and everyone here is really addicted to super high end mountain bikes and we eat, sleep and breathe that stuff every day and we do build a lot of nice stuff. Uh, something I've been doing to change it up is this. So this is my uh, quote unquote gravel bike, which is kind of more just like a rigid mountain bike. It's a Salsa Cutthroat, uh, 700 by 42 C tires, uh, rigid, uh, but still has flat bars and a dropper post. Uh, super fun, I don't know, it's, it's entertaining for me to ride that thing. It still has nice parts, but it's a weird bike. I kind of ride it like a gravel bike, but also ride it on mountain bike trails and it like performs really poorly because it has no suspension and skinny tires. And I don't know, to me that's like very interesting because it's a totally different world than riding like world-class mountain bikes like I normally ride. So that's what we've done to change it up. And we posted out on Instagram a while ago and I love that thing. Maybe we'll make a video about it. Let us know down in the comments if you think we should. Why you bred? Uh, a lot of people ask that. Uh, the image we used to ask you guys what questions you wanted to see in this video was my face photoshopped on bread. Somebody once commented saying that my hair looks like a King's Hawaiian dinner roll. It kind of does. And then the staff here, uh, thought it was really funny and they photoshopped my face on a King's Hawaiian dinner roll and then they posted that. I never even saw that photo before it was posted. Uh, it was pretty funny, um, but that's that's why I'm bred. Will you keep riding the Uno Dash? So this is my current trail machine. Uh, it's a Uno Dash. 
uh, handmade in Barcelona, number 24 of 50. Custom paint, absolutely gorgeous. The creme de la creme of bicycles. Uh, I absolutely love this bike. It's probably the best bike I've ever had and it just like holds such prestige because it's just so rare and Uno is just such a rad, like iconic, I don't know, elusive brand. Uh, will I keep it? No, I never keep anything. <laughs> um, I'm always trying to change bikes up to ride all the different stuff that we sell and I just love changing and riding different bikes. So I've got about six months in this thing and I don't wanna sell it, but it's for sale and I'm gonna get a Revel Ranger next and then I don't know, maybe I'll get another Dash that has a different custom paint job because they've been posting some really gorgeous custom paint jobs and I kind of want just another one after I ride the Revel Ranger. Do you buddy the sh... What? What? Quit. I read that wrong. Do you butter the chamois or your butt? I don't know. I've never used chamois butter on my chamois. I, uh, I never use that. But you know what? A lot of people use chamois butter. It blows my mind. I guess a lot of people have sensitive butt cheek areas. I've never used it. I don't know the answer to that question, I swear to God. Uh, well, anyways, that's it for this episode. If you guys made it this far, I genuinely love you. If you ever see me, tell me that you made it to the very end of an Ask Jeff YouTube video and I'll probably give you a hug. Well, maybe not now, because you can't touch people. Whatever, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, see you in the next one.